Well, hello everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. So today what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, talk about another type of transport ventilator. And the, the reason I'm doing this is actually I had uh, some questions from a friend in, actually in South Africa that they uh, have transitioned to this specific ventilator. This is actually a ventilator that I've used for several years uh, during transport. I actually started out using the uh, Biomed devices or the BMD CrossFit 4 in 2006 when I started flying. Uh, so I'm fairly familiar with it, and I thought I'd do a series of videos to help to help him out, and then of course to help um, his colleagues out uh, that are transitioning to this ventilator because it does have some um, uh, idiosyncrasies, I suppose, and, and and it is a little different in the way that we control the the I to E ratio than 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 certain other types of ventilators, certainly the the LTV 1200. So let's just go ahead and look at the uh, external characteristics of the ventilator first. So what you're doing is you're actually looking at the front of the ventilator. As you can see, it's not a particularly large ventilator, and most of the interfacing will actually occur on this touch screen here when it's on, and I'll, I'll show that to you here in a little bit. Um, some of the things to note, this is the max pressure di um, dial here. Um, when I start out talking about adult mechanical ventilation, uh, this max pressure here, we actually want to go ahead and, and have the pressure all the way up. Now, when we talk about pressure controlled ventilation, which is actually called baby mode with this ventilator, we will actually decrease this max pressure because I'll be setting a pressure uh, to do my pressure ventilation on. However, in an adult patient, in volume control ventilation, which is what we'll start out with talking about, you want your pressure all the way up. Um, this is your PEEP here. This is more peep, this is less peep. And then this here is very important. Uh, this will be um, really important when we talk about ID ratios, I time, uh, because this is actually how you'll set all that. You will not actually set an I time in volume control ventilation like you would the LTV 1200. So if I increase the flow of gas into the patient, that will decrease my I time um, and um, increase my ID ratio. Likewise, if I decrease the flow, that will increase my I time and decrease my ID ratio. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and talk about that in a little more detail. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the right side of the ventilator here. Um, this is my um, bleed exhaust. Um, if I have a little, a little too much gas, it'll kind of bleed off from here. This is my high pressure inlet. Um, this ventilator uh, inlet, uh, so you know, my high pressure hose will connect to this and then it'll connect, connect to the, uh, the tank or the oxygen source. Um, a uh, thing to note about this specific ventilator here is uh, that it is does not have a turbine or a compressor like the LTV 1200, so it cannot um, it cannot produce it cannot ventilate on room air. It needs a constant supply of gas. It needs a constant uh, high pressure gas source. If you run out of gas, i.e., oxygen your ventilator no longer works. So that is something we need to be very careful about with this ventilator is that I always have a compressed gas source. Otherwise, this ventilator will not work. It will not ventilate on room air. Um, this is what's called the entrainment selector. And basically what this does is it, it uses the um, Bernoulli principle or a um, special case of the Bernoulli principle called the Venturi effect. And it can entrain air. Um, you can see the line here. It's on off. When I have this on off, Every bit of oxygen that's coming into the high pressure source is going to be delivered to the patient by the ventilator. So what this means is, this means my FiO2, whatever my patient is getting, will be 100%. There's absolutely no entrainment of atmospheric air, so this will be 100% oxygen. Um, if I turn the air entrainment on, the ventilator through the Venturi effect will now entrain air into the flow of oxygen that's going, going into the patient. Uh, when that occurs, you're looking at about 50 to 60 percent FiO2. So in this ventilator, we only have two selections. It's either your patient either gets 100 percent oxygen, or they get uh, 50 percent oxygen. Um, so 100 percent, 50 percent, or 50 to 60, um, and that's all. That's all they get. So we're fairly limited on our FiO2 selection. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the side of the ventilator here. Okay, so we have our power switch. This turns it on. Up is on, down is off. Um, one of the most important uh, buttons you'll find is this button here, the alarm reset. Um, that resets your alarms. Also, when you turn the vent power of the ventilator off after using it, it will alarm. You'll have to reset that. 
There is a temperature probe here, an O2 probe. Uh, we generally did not use these, however. Um, this is your exhalation valve and your airway pressure. Um, so these are your transducing lines that should uh, be attached to the ventilator circuit. And I'll just go ahead and show you an example of those um, on the ventilator circuit here. So these lines here and my exhalation valve line will simply slide right in. My airway pressure monitoring transducing line will slide in like that. And then the ventilator uh, circuit itself will actually plug in here. So this is uh, the ventilator circuit. Now, uh, I don't actually have one for this demonstration, but I'd recommend a HEPA filter. That I'd put a HEPA filter in between the ventilator and the patient um, to protect the ventilator and to protect the patient. So your ventilator circuit will attach here. Again, if you're not using a HEPA filter, but I would definitely recommend a HEPA filter. Um, now, if you decide to do a nebulizer, need to give beta agonist to your patient, you can attach um, nebulizer tubing here. You can place your nebulizer in line in the ventilator circuit itself, preferably uh, proximal to the patient. And um, I'll show you the nebulizer option in the ventilator. Um, it is not a continuous nebulizer like some ventilators will deliver the, um, the updraft nebulizer uh, continuously. Um, this ventilator, with every delivered breath, every inspiration, um, gas will flow through here and, and administer um, basically a breath of nebulizer uh, of nebulized particles to the patient. So like, like some ventilators um, when you attach a nebulizer in line it's continuous um, just like a regular breathing treatment if you get somebody an updraft nebulizer uh, you know, they put it in their mouth and it continuously flows at 8 liters a minute or whatever you set it at. This is different in that the only time that the nebulizer activates is when the ventilator delivers gas. So, ch -ch 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 -ch, and that's when the patient actually gets um, the nebulized medication. Uh, so it's going to generally take a little bit longer to administer a breathing treatment with this ventilator. Um, unless you, you simply decide not to use a ventilator hook uh, your nebulizer in line and attach, um, instead of attaching the, the uh, nebulizer tubing to the ventilator, you attach it to a oxygen source and you turn it on 8 liters a minute. Now doing that, with, now if you bypass this option, the ventilator, what you will end up doing is you'll end up adding, um, you know, let's say you set your nebulizer 8 liters, you'll add 8 liters of flow to the uh, ventilator circuit. So you're adding flow to the patient and you are going to alter um, their eye time, their E time, and ultimately their ID ratio while you're doing that treatment. And so you want to be very careful about um, um, how you do that, and, and you just want to you want to see how the patient responds, and uh, you may have to adjust uh, the ventilator settings accordingly. Okay, guys, that's it for the external characteristics. Uh, actually, it's not. I apologize. I'll show you the back here. This is just a, one of many different kinds of mounts. And this is actually where the exhaled air um, from the patient, um, or not exhaled, but the relief valves, I'm sorry. Um, and these are air inlet valves as well for um, entraining air when I have the air entrainment uh, turned on. You don't want to block those, otherwise you can come, cause problems uh, with FiO2 delivery. Okay, guys, that's uh, now that's it uh, for uh, the basic uh, external characteristics of the Biomed Devices CrossVent 4. Uh, thanks for hanging in there.